How many people are coming to find out more about storytelling? How to tell a better story? What's uh, how to do this thing? <laughs> oh. The Golden Fleece is a community of people interested in storytelling and organizations. And it started in Washington, 2000. This is the first assembly with people in Europe outside of Washington. For me, Golden Fleece is a, is a group of people who actually were the core of uh, what's beginning to be a movement in organizational storytelling. In 2002, I went to Washington to meet Steve Denning and Madeleine Blair and the others and really got invigorated by this concept of story in organizations. And I've since that time used that in my own professional work. As a young man, he stood there with his enormous wings, and when he moved them, you could see the curtains sway just a little bit. Their town was a little bit special. Around it was a wall, and you, uh, you were allowed to fly out over the wall onto the outside. You were allowed to do that, and if you managed, you will become a hero or heroine, or they will tell stories and sing songs to your honor. They are not scared of me and my words and my expressions. They are scared of the pictures that they made in their own heads. I could tell you right now, without bragging, like 400 stories, blah, 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 like that. And it's not words, it's images. Yeah. So that's why I don't forget them. It's a very strong tool to express myself. What is happening is that you, uh, you are you're talking to each other. Even though I tell stories for three hours and you don't say a word, we are talking together. You are carrying half of the uh, uh, responsibility for some things to happen here. Yeah. If you didn't want to dance me, with me, okay, yeah. I have to some, find someone else. When I first became a facilitator in 1996, I had already learned about storytelling from our own international festival in New Zealand. And I was intrigued by the power of it, the ability storytelling has to touch people on a very deep level. So data tends to get stuck here and produces an argument, but storytelling goes right to the heart of things. It can move people in a way that's very unique and very powerful and very quick. So whenever I find a process or, a, as I said, a tool, a technique, that's really effective, as well as efficient, uh, I'll use it. And story is incredibly effective. I think one of the perfect examples is when you have people who are meeting each other for the first time. How do you help them discover who they are in a comfortable, um, non-threatening way, and yet they still can be able to build bonds between each other because perhaps they're a new team that has to work together. Story is very effective that way. Organizations have mission statements and, and value statements and goals and things like that, which they say so many times that the words almost lose meaning, you know. So when I come, when working with organizations, I'll often, when I see that they need to be revitalized or um, enlivened, I'll ask them to tell stories inspired by those words. You know, and, and I'll, t I'll extract the word out of the mission statement and say, okay, what does freedom mean? What does um, client service mean in a personal story? And they start telling personal stories, and all of a sudden those words come alive again. So that's another way I use it. that when I didn't tell a story, everything was chaos and confusion. When I did tell a story, suddenly we'd be moving forward rapidly into the future again. So not being totally unobservant, I kept telling stories. So at the end of four years, the World Bank was being benchmarked as one of the world's leaders in knowledge management, one of the world's most admired knowledge enterprises. 
that uh, I mean the, the kind of stories that I found the most useful and so the stories that I spent most of my time teaching people are what I've called springboard stories, stories that can communicate a complex idea and spark action even in a hostile, difficult, cynical audience. And so those kinds of stories I spend my, most of my time either telling them or, or uh, showing people how to craft them and how to perform them. <laughs> I had two days of fun and uh, beautiful conversations and I got a lot of inspiration to bring home again and to use in my own uh, practice. It was fantastic, it was uh, all these different people and all the speakers were, were there, there was this amazing energy. What uh, Steve told about um, how you use stories in change processes and the different stages that's for me very important. That was for me very useful and that's uh, something I can use in my practice. I have uh, received new tools of how to work and how to use everything that I have from before um, and to put it into new uses and to put it into a different use in organizations or I've got new ideas of how to use it in different cultures or in different settings and I think it's, um, it's given me new openings. Thank you.